Hello everyone and welcome back to the Spanish Sling, a podcast where we try to bridge the gap between the Spanish and Singaporean companies and encourage economic relations between them. Throughout the interviews we have talked about different sectors, but how about setting up a business in Singapore? What are the keys? What are the steps to follow? We have today someone who really can give, give us an overview and really help us setting up a business in Singapore. So this is why we welcome to the Spanish Sling, Alma Thursae. Hello. A senior account <laughs> executive at, at Slick, which is a company that basically focuses on helping companies and entrepreneurs setting up a business in Singapore. That's correct. Yeah, so <laughs> I think uh, throughout our interviews, we have talked about with professionals throughout different sectors. But they had already a company yeah. here in Singapore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But now, what about someone who comes maybe from Spain or, or around the world, even in Singapore, that wants to start a company? So what I have seen here is that Singapore is so attractive for foreign companies when you come to, I want to start a business. So what do you think is so attractive? Well, thank you so much, Clara, for inviting me. No, thank you. To this podcast is really a... Uh, nice project that you are carrying on i've watched some of your videos and it's an excellent job that <laughs> thank you are you doing. So much. it's my pleasure to be here no, it's our pleasure to have you here thank you so much <laughs> thank you so singapore is uh, an excellent hub in southeast asia is the, the entry point for many multinational companies mm -hmm. to enter asia markets mm -hmm. that might be one one of them apart from the uh, taxation system political stability mm -hmm. they speak in english which is also a good yeah, incentive. Really yeah. So this, this makes many uh, international, multinational companies to think about Singapore for, for their expansion in, in Southeast Asia. Exactly. So yeah. we have so many advantages in, in Singapore, but are the steps to setting up a business in the end are also easy. So what are the main steps that you have to follow when setting up a business here in Singapore? Well, uh, there, there will be a few and it will depend on what is the business that you want to yes, set imagine. up. But yeah. first of all, my, the first recommendation to have, uh, I, I would say, is to have a good business plan. Study yes. the market. Make sure that the idea that you have in your brains is going to work and there is a demand in the market for, for it. Because sometimes it may work in your brains, but it might not exactly. be enough, right? Yes. So n next would be to make sure which is the type of company that you want to, to incorporate. Exactly. Is it going to be a sole proprietorship? Is it going to be a partnership? How many partners are you? Mm -hmm. And this will make a difference later on with first thing liability and second mm -hmm. taxation. Okay. So that, that will be very important to make sure first before you, you proceed. And uh, well, maybe looking for uh, information about uh, the licenses that you may need. Uh, look for funding. Mm -hmm. Maybe there, there is any grant available for, your, for your, the industry that you're looking at. And finally, when everything is clear, go ahead with the incorporation. Okay. Definitely you will need uh, some uh, professional advice on that and on taxation, etc. If you need that, yeah, more than advisable to look for uh, professional advice. Yeah, so what Almanza just said basically is have a good base, have a good idea, have a good business plan, and then work on that with the, any type of um, thing that you may need. So maybe it's a grant, maybe it's investment, or a good partner, any distributor, so that you, ha you can work on that uh, later in the future. So the next um, question will be, we have talked about the setting up a business here in Singapore, mm -hmm. but there will be some Spanish uh, companies listening to this podcast. So what are the main uh, differences between setting up a business in Spain and yeah. in Singapore? Well, there, there, there will be many, but I would say the simplest uh, is the simplicity of mm. setting up a business in Singapore. There's a lot less of bureaucracy and everything can be done online. And okay, there's a saying in Singapore, you can set up a company one day and yeah. with just one dollar. It might not be totally true, but it might be possible, but put it a couple of days. Within a working day, you can have your company set up and running. Yeah, so even the saying gives you an idea of what the reality is that it's really easy to, to set up business in Singapore and the simplicity of the process, as you have mentioned. Yeah. And what advantage would you give to any Spanish company who may be looking to set up a business here in Singapore? What advice would you give them? So I, I believe the best uh, advice I could give is uh, maybe take an example of the founders of uh, Sleep, my company, uh, Adrian and Julian. Both, they are entrepreneurs themselves, they have uh, incorporated a couple of companies before Slick, 
and they were having difficulties with uh, incorporation of their business, accounting, and keeping the company compliant with IDAS, with the taxation and, and ACRA. So they, they came up with the idea that there must be a solution for this. There must be a simpler way to do, mm -hmm. to do all this stuff. Uh, because entrepreneurs, they have to spend time doing their business, which is what, <laughs> what they are specialized specialize in. Yeah. So just put all those uh, travel in someone else's hands, some professional on that. So, but okay, that idea was great. Yeah, maybe to find a solution to an uh, existing problem. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned before, yeah, it's a brilliant idea that you have, but is it going to work? So what they did is to meet up with 150 entrepreneurs in Singapore wow. and interview them one at a time <laughs> to, to find out which are the problems they are facing in terms of incorporation, transaction, and keeping the company compliant. Mm -hmm. So yeah, after these 150 interviews, they found out, okay, yeah, this is time to go ahead because they, they, there's a market for this. Uh, we are going to offer a solution for all these uh, little problems that uh, yeah, entrepreneurs face. are facing. Yeah. So they went ahead with that. And right after the incorporation, meet up again with those uh, 150 uh, founders mm -hmm. to offer them the solution that they have incorporated and surprisingly they managed to close 80 percent of those interviews in form of sales so that was a good start and uh, an ice breaking mm -hmm. to make your first 100 customers which is like maybe is the, the the starting of a of yes, a really startup <laughs> yeah right so yeah that was a brilliant idea and i will i will advise any entrepreneur to study the market make sure your idea is going to work mm -hmm. and find your ways to to get it started yeah that's a fantastic idea and a fantastic example yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant right so uh i'm sure you're in in the company you you see uh different companies facing different barriers and processes when setting up a business in singapore what would you say Anato, is the hardest barrier that they have to face when setting up a business in singapore oh that i would say that's a difficult question because there's no no many barriers in singapore wow. because i would say it's like as i mentioned it's simplicity mm -hmm. right so everything is clear maybe <laughs> the barrier could be some certain forums that they are online some entrepreneurs that are looking for information and read comments from some users here and there with different opinions and they come to us with a very confused uh, concept which uh, yeah in fact everything is simpler than that yeah so, so yeah that might be but in fact that is not a very well so don't believe everything that internet says as <laughs> yeah. everyone knows right but i think singapore is so easily because i uh, do you think depending on which com country do you come from is it a barrier as well no at all not at all at all at all at all as as long as okay you can run your business in english if you're going to establish yourself in singapore at least a minimum of english will be necessary mm -hmm. but not even that well, <laughs> not and, even and that. what about the sector so is there any particular sector that there's it exists a fast track so the setting up a business in that sector is easier than maybe in another one mm -hmm. Well, easier not in terms of uh, of uh, process to incorporate, mm -hmm. but maybe in receiving support from government funding. There is a couple of sectors that uh, are emphasized now by the Singapore government, like uh, just to mention some fintech, maybe mm -hmm. or green industries, yeah. uh, robotics, artificial intelligence, etc. So, if you are in this sector, you may be. Uh, able to to benefit from some grants mm. right but in terms of incorporation you you can set up your business as a mm, marketing yeah. consultancy or a gym and it's, it's going to be exactly the same process wow so really great news for anyone who wants to set up a company here in singapore but finally i mean we have talked about the processes the steps the barriers i'm sure there's a lot of information for one entrepreneur who wants to set up a business so do you think, uh, would, you, would you advise some legal and professional and financial maybe, uh, professional advice in, in this question? Because maybe they, they have an idea about how to, yeah. <laughs> to execute it, right? Yes, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. I would advise always to seek uh, professional advice, mm -hmm. particularly if uh, your company is uh, multinational, you're coming to Singapore to set up a, uh, just a, an office for operational purposes maybe, you may need to find advice on taxation. Uh, Singapore has uh, double taxation treaties with more than 50 countries. 
So if, if you're operating in different countries, might be advisable to seek uh, professional advice, uh, either for uh, for company taxation or even for your own personal, if your residence is in Singapore or in Spain or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you so much, Amanda, for all your advice. And I'm sure all the audience has come up with them. Same with the basic idea that Singapore is really easy to survive a business and that anyone is welcome to the country. So thank you so much for listening and thank you Anna for, for your interview. Thank thanks, you so much. thanks to you Clara again for having me here. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.